Hey guys, it's Ed from Experimental Airlines, here to show you a few revisions I've made with the Synapse foam board flying wing for FPV. My main intention for these improvements was to optimize two things. One was the radio frequency environment of the video transmitter and of the Dragon Link receiver antenna and receiver here. Previously, you'll note I had all of those clustered in the front, which I knew from the beginning wasn't optimal, but it was sufficient to fly around medium uh, to short ranges and worked well enough. So I needed to separate video transmitter from the receiver. The second one was to optimize the center gravity adjustment of the aircraft. I'd noted that a center gravity, which was seven inches aft of the nose right here, which falls about here, would be optimal. In reality, it turned out I was flying more like five or six inches aft of that. And that required an increase in the Elevon reflex in order to keep the plane pitched up in a neutral position for flight. This was due to adding the GoPro and a lot of other gear to the nose, and there just wasn't a lot of room to adjust the battery back and forth to maximize the uh, CG location. So what I did was made the fuselage longer by 50%, so it's 20 inches long now, and consequently it's, it's narrower as well. It makes it a little bit easier to grasp and hand launch, and provides a much larger space for me to adjust the battery location on the inside. You'll note that large empty space behind the battery which I can shift it that was previously occupied by a lot of the electronics. Those electronics including the OSD and all the wiring associated with it I've moved to this hatch behind the wing and this has the effect of uh, cantilevering some of the weight backwards on the plane as well as the increased moment arm of the motor and the speed controller located further back it tends to cantilever the tail down somewhat. This permits the center of gravity to fall at its optimal location right here. It also keeps this area clear of wires other than the lead to the speed controller and the one from the battery and of course the uh, video lead coming from the GoPro camera back to the OSD which is located in the fuselage. In order to preserve the square cross section of the rear fuselage here I did ramp this a slightly more uh, acutely and so that that created a, a narrower space here so I moved the speed controller from the bottom here to the side. For the wing tie downs, I used carbon arrow shafts here and here, which protrude through the fuselage all the way back to the reinforced uh, foam board uh, motor mount. And so they provide a structural component the entire length of the plane. The rubber bands originate around that arrow right here, and they simply enter the fuselage at the location of the hatch and then the rubber bands are looped around the leading edge of the arrow shafts here in the front and they stay with the plane once I dismount the wing. Uh, the Dragon Link receiver has been moved to the leading edge of the left wing and it's behind a small piece of clear plastic so I'm able to view the link and power and status lights that are present there and I used a 24 inch uh, antenna lead through the leading edge channel up to the trailing edge of the vertical stabilizer here. Ideally, I might recommend for other builders to consider getting a 30-inch antenna lead and locating the Dragon Link a little more central just to simplify the internal wiring and to keep the uh, weight towards the center. I moved the video transmitter, which is a Lawmate 500 milliwatt, 2.4 gigahertz transmitter, out on the left wing. And I'm using a Cloverleaf antenna, which is, of course, detachable. Now, it was fairly complicated to wire this inside. I don't recommend this necessarily for a beginner or an impatient person. It was actually much easier to have all the electronics in the removable fuselage and be able to slide that out, do all the wiring, yet it left a very cluttered outcome, whereas this one was a lot of pre-wiring and gives a very clean outcome. The only wires you see are right here, and that could actually be cleaned up a little bit too. The motor is still a Turnigy NTM prop drive from Hobby King, it's 1400 kV, 35 by um, 36 millimeter can size, and a 10 by 6 uh, master air screw prop from Hobby King as well. Found this to be um, a very robust, reliable uh, power plant with a 55 amp ESC, a Turnigy ESC from Hobby King. And this is on the uh, titanium L mounted or L bent uh, metal motor mount, which is stuck to a stack of foam board uh, interspersed with gift cards here. So this is a nice, sturdy, robust uh, platform to mount the motor. So far, the configuration seems to fly very well, and I have, hope to have some flight footage for you soon. Uh, it's, I don't have quite enough flights on it to statistically comment on whether I get better flight times on the timer, but subjectively, it feels like it does fly better. It flies straight and level on a slightly lower power setting, 
and the battery drain has been less for the same duration flights by the timer. So I expect probably I've gotten 10, maybe 15% better flight times having moved the center of gravity back a bit. And the reflex is visually noticeably less needed than the previous configuration with the nose heavy, more reflex needed to keep it up. Thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned. If you build this plane, please come up with any comments or advice you might have. I'd like to consider the, my, all my designs crowdsourced and any improvements we can incorporate and share back with the community would be great. So, hey, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.